Okay, so hello, my name's Eddie, and we're at Rojden um, Shopping Centre in the Wetlands, and we've got this young lady here, what's your name please? Susanna Story. Susanna Story, how are you doing? Hi, good. So what it is, we're just asking the general public their views on uh, Brexit. Yeah. Um, you know, so basically it's the European elections tomorrow, yeah. are you going to vote? I am. Okay. Yes. And is it a personal question to Unless ask? Unless we're going to Labour, because I am past my due date. <laughs> so you Labour or you're Tory? <laughs> no, I joke there. Okay. So um, just your opinions on Brexit then. Yeah. So um, tomorrow you say you're going to vote then. Um, can I ask you a personal question? Who, yeah. are you, what, what are you going to vote for? Um, I think I'm probably going to vote Green. You're going to vote Green? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Namely because I've taken a few of those tests online and my uh, political affiliations align most with that party. Right, that, that's a good point. But yeah. historically I've always voted Labour. Yeah. Um, but I've always ended up living in conservative run constituency. Right. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, I'd love to ask you if you're a Remainer or a Lever, but do you think that the British people now should respect the vote? You know, it's a democratic society, you know, a lot of people over history fought for our rights for vote yeah. and now we've decided to leave. Do you think we should get on with it or do you think we should still try to sort of... I think that's a very loaded question. Yeah, yeah good, um, that's why, you know. <laughs> I, I personally voted to remain, Yeah. but I also believe in, in democracy mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, I understand that because the majority of people that voted voted to leave, yeah. we ought to go that way. However, yeah. I do feel that a lot of people are misinformed and their decisions for voting leave mm -hmm. at the time in 2016 um, was they were sold something that's very different to the reality of what we're facing right. today okay. um, and in light of that I think that in all fairness people should be given the right to vote for what it is that we're actually leaving on right. so like people voted to leave but leave in a good way if you but like. do you think because the vote was basically was it 51 48 49 it was very really 50 yeah. 50 but you know do you think if we had a second referendum do you think if the vote just turned the other way slightly i think do you think no end yeah, result but you know? i think i think the initial vote was a yeah. bit was a bit kind of haphazard if you if you think about it because people it, it's not it's not as um black and white as right. vote leave or vote stay it's it's what are, you, what are you actually voting for? I don't think people voted to be worse off. I don't think people voted to yeah. be um, to be a more divided country. Right, I don't okay. think that's what people were voting for. No, I don't for. think they originally thought no, that. No, exactly. Know, so I think in light of that, I yeah. think people should be given the right to vote for what it is that actually, um, what's actually going to happen. So in, in, in that sense, it should it ought to be this is what the deal this is the deal yeah. that we're going to be leaving with yeah. this is what will happen if we remain now choose whereas before there wasn't it wasn't clear what it is people were actually but to be fair for. when cameron was in charge he yeah. was very much a remainer yeah. and on the question paper it said in or out yeah. and we had 88 percent of the adult population vote so in a way they did know what they were voting for this myth yeah. about they did people knew yes or no and it was yeah. loaded more for stay in and but, people still voted but arguably, out arguably you, know? you look, at, look at the information that's available to you yeah. online yeah. a lot of what the leave campaign sold wasn't right. entirely accurate they're even being held to right. account okay that's now. a fair point okay um so in light of that i think but I think it's it's raised a kind of a larger question about our democracy and yeah. that what's been allowed, like, should it be fair for people to be sold lies and vote on lies? But then we've always should, had lies. Politicians have always lied. You know, like arguably, but know, we've also not referendum. had previous to this. We've also not had access to the internet and to information yeah, and the information age that we have now. Yeah. And so, in light okay. of that, I think people okay. need to be make, be able to make more informed decisions and be encouraged to make more informed decisions in order for it to truly be a democracy otherwise they're voting on opinions and not facts and i think that's what's important i think that's what we've missed as a society i think that's what's made britain great for so many centuries mm -hmm. you know i mean don't well let's not get started yeah, on yeah, colonialism yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, like, we're not but do you know what i mean but like but that's a separate thing, but i think it? i think kind of the whole campaign about make make britain great again was sold on this idea of, of colonialism and what was the great, great British Empire and the years and the histories of what built Britain and made it great, great again. So unless Britain plans on going and colonising yeah, the, the rest is, of the so, world, but, that's living on a false reality. Okay. I think we need to move forward now yeah. and look at what unites us. Like it's the United Kingdom. It's the things that unite us yeah. that make Britain great. And so whether you voted remain or leave is, is irrelevant. I think we need to be voting about what unites us, not what divides us. I think us. people in general want that but what you've got to respect is 
17.5 million people voted out. We want our own. We want our own laws, our own money, our own sort of way of life. Why can't we still be that and still be Europeans? You know. Um, and also, do you feel like? Nigel Farage with the Brexit Party. The oh, reason, don't get me started the, the on Nigel with the Farage. Brexit <laughs> party, no, the reason with the Brexit Party, don't you think that the people who did vote to leave have been portrayed by Parliament and that's why the Brexit Party was born? You know, if Parliament two years ago, because they promised, Labour and Tories to be fair, they promised once the vote was decided, we would do everything we can to make sure that we, and we haven't. I so think, yeah, the, so the Parliament people have portrayed the people, whatever way you voted for, you know, Theresa May and, the, and the, even Corbyn, that they're, they're not, they're self, do you think they're self-serving? Or do you think they're, they're, they're serving the people? I think, I think you need to take a step back and, and look at why people voted to leave. And I think yeah, but that's all gone now. What I'm saying is, what, what do we do now? It's I mean, not all gone though, because... Why is it not gone? Um, well, because the repercussions of Brexit can be felt across the nation. I think the division is greater than it's ever been. I think, um, mm. you know, okay. a lot of people, a lot of people that I spoke to that voted to leave voted because of immigration. And the yeah, that was a big, that was a big the, point. And, yeah. and the part of that was Mr. Nigel Farage with his little van full of brown people um, <laughs> talk, talking about how immigration is going to decrease. The reality of it is, it's not. You're actually going to increase immigration from the rest of the world um, as a result. But then a country of like Britain, how, how, of how closing your doors to you? you why Europe. can't the British people want to be them? We've had we've had immigration from say last hundred years. Yeah. Suddenly you've got to say to yourself, there's, if there's not enough work and not enough houses or whatever, yeah. how can you just let people keep coming though? I think I think that's a really really useful question, and I think if you if you talk to a lot of people that voted to leave, a lot of it was had come from people that felt unseen, who were being told the story that um, their jobs are being stolen by immigrants. But it's not that their jobs no, are being stolen by immigrants. it was more than that, though, don't you, you know, think? You um, know, our industrial, our industrial kind of, um, the way that Britain operated, so a lot of industries, so mining's and, and things like that closed down. We've yeah. moved to a much more technological yeah, age. Yeah. Like, where where has where have those questions, so those people that voted to leave because immigrants were taking their jobs, right? you t take the immigrants out the jobs are still not there like what what is the government and what are people who voted to stay like voted to sorry voted yeah. to leave you doing about those real issues of why people voted to leave isolation lack of jobs lack yeah. of motivation lack of community breakdown in community like what's actually being done about that like it's i think remain leave is relevant at this point right because <laughs> whether we choose to remain or choose to leave these are issues that are still going to need to be tackled and i think the bigger question is about okay what does britain look like now well i think britain's a good country so you whether know, we stay or whether we remain what does britain but look the like thing now? is now we've we've the argument is we're leaving now so what what should the politicians do you know what these general elections coming up and, and the european elections tomorrow you know the British people want their say. You know it's all very well saying, oh this and that and the other, but we're we're Britain, EU. That's another separate issue. And the people just said, let's just give it ten years. Say in ten years' time it doesn't work out. Yeah. You know this brave new world that England's going to or Britain's going to go into yeah. this new world. We can trade with other countries around the world. Yeah. Why can't we give it say ten years? And, the, and in ten years' time it doesn't work. Yeah. It's like divorcing your husband or your wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, do you know what? It wasn't so bad after all. I think we haven't actually left yet. That's the thing. That's what that's what yeah. makes me laugh. It's I like think, we I haven't left yet. Let's see how we get on. I think as think? well though. I think it'd be naive to say that like because we voted for it to have many years, 2016. No, I'm just saying it's an example three, three years for ago. Remainers. Yeah, I suppose, but then also I think part of it was, the, if you look at the age of the people that voted, there's a whole generational gap between the people that voted around the EU right. and the people that are going to suffer as a consequence of that. Um, what about the voices of the younger generation that are not being heard? Personally, I think that's a false argument. Yeah. With the generation that actually fought the Nazis, mm. there's another saying, you know, there's wisdom in the old. Yeah. And they were doing it for their grandchildren. So yeah. me personally, I personally find that quite a vile argument. Well, that's yeah. my personal opinion yeah. on that one. And also, what, what's a young person's does his vote count more than say, somebody my age? I'm not, I'm not saying it counts you know, more. I'm just saying, seems that like I just, I'm saying I'm saying it needs to be considered. And in, in the same way that you can say that that's a vile argument, the flip could be true. To only hear the voice of the older generation could also... Is that really democratic? Isn't, isn't not dem democracy the inclusion of all people, regardless no, of race and but age? But the thing is, though, before, when Cameron had the referendum, it, it was all, they all thought they were going to stay in, didn't they? 
mm. right? All the all the media, everything, the whole bandwagon, you know, the polls, you know, but but they still lost. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> people want to leave. You know, Cameron, he thought he, he thought we was all going to stay in, but we didn't. Mm. So youngsters, olders, we all count. You know, from 16 or 18 to to 100. You know, every vote counts, and you can't sort of say with the youngsters this and, and the olders. It's all it's all the same. But what my argument yeah, but that's is, what I'm to say. but my argument is, we're voted to leave now. So don't you think we should just get on with it now? That's what the British people decide. If we if we're a democracy and we don't honour that, we might as well be in a fascist country. But what does what does getting on with it now? It mean? means leaving, getting a good deal. Do you think a no a good so deal? Leave, so leaving with a good deal. Do you think? Well, that's my that's my next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Do you think a bad deal is better than better than an, a no deal? Do you think we should just walk away, or do you think we should take a bad deal? I think we'd or, be naive to just walk away. Yeah, I agree personally. on that. Yeah. Um, because of the implications, the knock-on impact. Later on, yeah, we'd Later on, not just, not, yeah. I mean, not, not just like business-wise, but tourism-wise, yeah. yeah. I think reputation-wise, like what makes Britain great is about its diversity, and I think it, it's making England look like a really like closed-minded country, mm. and it's not. Um, and, well, Britain, sorry, not just England, but yeah. like it's making Britain look like a really closed-minded country, and it's Why not. isn't it, when we've always been diverse since, say, the last hundred years, so you can't just sort of say now, we're close-minded when we, we were the, we well, were the front runners in the world. Well, I think Farage has got a lot to do with that. Why, why is he? Because all he talks about is bloody immigration. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, does he? He does, he though. He doesn't. He doesn't. He does. Ninety percent of his argument is based around immigration, and I think that's part of my concern with with the Brexit party and with what they stand for. Okay. I, 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 I voted to remain, yeah. but I do think we should leave because we're a democracy. Well, that's, that's, that's what it comes down to, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't agree with the way that Farage did it, though. Well, you could argue all politicians and all people. I also don't know. think immigration is the big deal. No, no, it wasn't the big. No, well. but it was. It was. It was part of the of the pool, so to speak, for leavers. Yeah, but it I wasn't know, the but only but thing. It was a combination. But the majority of, everything. of immigrants coming from Europe are not brown. So why has he got brown people on his on his van? Well, I don't. You know, I mean, I can't really say for that. So I take offence to yeah. his uh, his political tactics. Right, okay. <laughs> Uh, do you think Theresa May should resign, or do you think she just she should just sit through? I now? mean, I never voted Conservative, no. so don't ask me right. about Conservative. Do you think she's she's very unlucky in this day and age? She's in this very very precarious situation. I think, I think she's got a thankless task. Yeah, I, I think I, yeah. It, I think it, it's irrelevant that it's Theresa May. I think whoever ended up in yeah. that position, mm -hmm. which it should have been David Cameron, I don't think he should have resigned. Yeah. He should have seen it. Through. Do you think he? Do you think he could have? He could have turned around and said, look. He copped out. I think he copped he, he out. out. Yeah, I think he was a bit of a coward. Well, he was all for the Remain, and he thought they would they would win. I think that's part. I think that was part of the problem. I think the Remain were very lethargic in the way that they right. tackled the campaign because I don't think anyone ever thought that the UK would would vote. Yeah, well, that's, that was in the same way America never thought Trump would well, be president. But then people, but hey, know, people surprise us. Yeah, but this, that's what I say with the media and everything. It's all, it's all. They still lost, you know, with Trump and, and Brexit. They still lost. They had all the media, all the power, all the people in, you know, the big wigs, and they still lost. So, in the day, the people, they do count more than anything else, don't you think? I think, yeah, I think it highlights uh, the fact that people don't feel listened to. And I think it highlights the fact well, that there's yeah, been a massive true. breakdown in communities. I think there's been a, bre uh, a breakdown in the way that people interact with each other. And, you know, yes, okay, there's been, ra there's been a a certain rise in, in the way that people express their opinions, especially the far right. Um, but we can only see that as something that was underlying coming to the surface. It's always been there. Now it's at the surface. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about healing our country. Let's talk about bringing unity back. Let's talk about really... Well, I think this country has all that. I think that's all a bit of a myth, to be honest. I think people come to England because they know it's a good country. I think that's so, very easy for you as a white middle class no, man no, to say. I, no, I think, I think in general have, people have do. You, have you ever experienced racism oh, I have before? Done. I have done, yeah, a few times, yeah, in America. I, I lived in America for five years. In this country? No, not in this country, I no. Have, I have well, experienced it in this right. country, and I was born and raised in this yeah. country. Um, so to say that it doesn't exist, I think it's no, very No, I'm saying, no, what I'm saying, this country's still a good country, whatever... Whatever way you look at it, people still want to come to this country, so it yeah. can't be that bad, you know? But I think the, the conversation still needs to be had. Right. Just because your viewpoint is that it's a good country, it doesn't mean that people aren't still per facing yeah. persecution and yeah. isolation and, well, and the things are why yeah. people voted leave in the first place. So do you think Britain now, if and when we finally leave, do you think it can stand on its own two feet again in this brave new world? You know, globalisation. Do you think Britain can, you know, I think the a trade lot. and I, stuff like that? I, when it's all said and done and we finally leave, 
the EU because we're still being Europe don't forget we're still Europeans we're not you know we're in the we're not in the EU but we're still in Europe but do you think there's a world massive world you got China you got India you got Americas all these countries that we can still trade with you know we can go yeah. on our own now and I mean Britain's got some clever people and do you think at the end of the day we can still survive I think it remains to be seen well this that's what I'm saying <laughs> but do you think we should but now we've voted yeah we've got to give it a try um because we've got no choice now have we really we've got to do it I don't know. And I think I we, think don't you think this country is good enough to do it? Surely it is. I have yet to see that, but um, <laughs> personally, from the way that they've handled Brexit, it doesn't give well, me that Well, that's the hope. politicians, isn't it? That's the politicians, Yeah, not but the people. ultimately, the politicians the are the ones have been that make poor. They've let, they've let the people down, don't you think? You know, and having worked for local government and seen kind of the way that it, it's just... Falling, yeah, I agree. Falling, they... falling apart. It's it, at the end of the day. I think there's a systemic change that needs to happen across yeah. the board. It's not one isolated area. It's not one grassroots grassroots movement. That's so if do we it. stayed to, if we stayed in, remain. So so we stay. Yeah. How do you think the country would have been better then? Because there would have been a lot of people who would have been disheartened, the, the leavers. So you would have the other way around. You know, if we were still in, the leavers would say let's have another referendum. You know, because the vote was basically 50-50, give or take. I think. You know, Again, still... I think it comes back to why people voted to leave. Right. And I don't think people voted to leave to be worse off. No, I agree. Of course they didn't. No, of course they didn't. But what I'm saying is, if we still remained, how do you think we would still have been better off? How could you explain to the leavers that we would have been better off if we, was in, if we were still remaining? So, so, so say remain won, yeah. and there's 50% voted leave. What could the remainers say to leave? Do you know what? We still are better off. Oh gosh, there's so much information that's available for you to, to, to see. Financially, yeah, but what examples? Financially, could we, be... we would have been better off. I think like ease of travel in and out of Europe. You, right, that's you're enough, not thinking yeah. about all the expats that from Britain who are living in Europe, mm -hmm. like are obviously going to be affected by the changes as well. Like oh, there's just there's so much information available. Just Google it, and you'll be able to see the benefits of staying versus the benefits of leaving. That being said, I don't think. If we're not going to have a second referendum, mm -hmm. then we have to leave because that was the demographic. Yeah, that's, democratic that's what vote. it comes down to. That's the bottom yeah. line. Whatever, whatever you think about the whole thing, you know, he said this or we didn't. You know, it's a democratic. You know, we had a vote, yes or no, and basically eighty-eight percent of the population, adult population, who we talked, to, they said no. Yeah. So, but did people know, really know what they were voting for? That was they, my question. I think they did. Did they vote? I think they did. What people voted to be worse off? No, no, of course they didn't vote to be worse <laughs> off. They voted to leave this country and see what would happen. Yeah, well, because of they what, took it, this yeah, calculated but that, gamble. But, that, it's was, a calculated but gamble. that was based on the information that they were being fed, which was there'll be 360 million available for the NHS. There'll but be this, that, the other. But that hasn't happened yeah, yet, though. Aware, we haven't left yet, though, have as we? As far as you're aware, what would have been or what are the benefits of remaining? Yeah, that's one. What's my answer is? What, oh, there's loads of financial no, benefits. No, no, no. From top. You said that. As far as you're aware. As far as you're aware. I agree with the, the you know the, with the passport and the movement. Okay, so my that. my kind of background is in is in the arts. Right. The majority of our arts funding comes from Europe. It doesn't come from the inside the UK oh, okay, because the Conservatives yeah. axed. That's the first thing that yeah, went. Yeah, the Conservatives okay, came yeah. to pay you. Arts and music got axed by the uh, Conservatives. So a lot of the funding that comes into the arts realms, mm -hmm. so into our into our film industry, into um, our theatres, and our schools comes from Europe. When we're not part of Europe, we're no we're no longer going to have access to that kind but of thing. But don't funding. you think Britain's always had fantastic bands, fantastic music, fantastic films? Yeah, and you know long where, before this. And do you know where the, and do you know where the funding's come from? Well, I don't I disagree. We've had so many fantastic bands, and they didn't they didn't get no you know, and the, all the all the all the films, the independent stuff. That was all that's all British people money recycling. Yeah, you but know? you know where the money come from? It's come from Europe. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the art that's being made at the mm. moment, that funding's coming from Europe. Oh, okay. So, from a personal point of view, um, access to funding is going to be a lot more limited um, with regards to that. So, that's one area. Yeah. Um, Economically, like a lot of businesses that trade in Europe, there's a lot of not locking impact tax-wise, um, trade-wise, there's a there's business-wise, there's a lot of. But like, don't you think Europe's one of the smallest out of the five continents? It's probably I don't know if it is smallest, but one of the smallest. But don't you think there's a massive world out there that Britain could trade with? You know, we're an English-speaking country, and most of the country, give or take. Can speak English, you know, they're English speaking, so that, that's an advantage with the language, yeah. you know. And there's some big heavyweights out there, you know, India, China, 
you know, Americas. The, these are people yeah. that are English speaking, th- well, sort of, of the but they can trade really, with us. I think one of the one of the downsides yeah. um, for me personally, um, I really like the fact that Europe has really strong laws on genetically modified food um, and GM products, and mm-hmm. meat and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know, having lived in America for three years, that that. <laughs> Uh, their food industry is an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of GM products, a lot of GM seeds, um, a lot of uh, kind of uh, meat that's fed lots of different things that's not good for you. Um, and being able to open doors to the markets like in America, that really concerns me for the health of our British people mm-hmm. um, because there's certain laws that protect us. So we have better quality food here, yeah, uh, non GM yeah, food, probably, non yeah, like. Yeah. Um, yeah. because of Europe so that's a real plus side of saying um, in Europe and leaving means that obviously that it opens the doors to not just America but like the rest of the world for food that may not be as beneficial to the health of the mm. British people so for me that's a that's a personal but we had foot loss. and mouth about 10 years ago and that was all that was all around Europe wasn't it with the horses and, and that was, cows and stuff like that, that. Was British meat, wasn't yeah, it? but that was still European. It was all it was all, all together as one, wasn't it? I know, but that's the meat. And um, if you're a vegetarian, at least you don't have to mm. eat the genetically okay. modified. Okay, food. have you got anything you want to ask us? Um, yeah. Um, what What is your purpose in doing this today? Well, we 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 we've been like I say, the last week we've been going around Northamptonshire interviewing different peoples obviously brexit's the main topic the last sort of two years really yeah. and obviously we've got the european elections tomorrow yeah. so last wednesday we sort of thought well we give it a week ahead and if you knew different people yeah. and then we're going to edit together and then we're going to put it on a youtube channel okay. um so basically just ask just just to people what they think because yeah. it's nice to us you know because people like you say you've got some really good views um and it's very much interesting how people you remain or you're you're a leave and you're very yeah. you're very sure about one or the other yeah. and you and you've got your mindset why yeah. you know and what i like about it you're not just stubborn or ignorant you've got your reasons yeah. so you can respect somebody's reasons yeah. for leaving and instead of just saying oh i don't like this you know yeah, you, yeah. you've explained to me why yeah. which i think is great yeah. you know and same with somebody who's a lever. Um, so I think that's really good that we can do this. I mean, some parts of the country, we couldn't just be talking like this. You know, we'd probably get arrested. You know, so that's what I love about this country, you know. And I think at the end of the day, we voted to leave. You know, and obviously it was very, very narrow. Yeah. Um, but now we've just got to get on with it. And like I say, in 10 years time, if it doesn't work out, yeah. we might just say, should we have a referendum? And I think most pe- most leavers would accept, we respect that. Yeah. And I think for Remainers, they've just got to, they've just got to accept it now, mm. you know, uh, because if it was the other way around. What would be an acceptable way for, to leave them? Well, that's a good question. It's like a divorce, isn't it? I think, um, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, as long as we've got all our um, laws, we've got our currency, we can control what we want. Um, and also to try and meet the EU, 50 50 because somewhere along the line they've got it they've got to ease off a bit and we've got to ease off a bit i don't think we can both be stubborn but do you not think that trying to leave with a quote unquote good deal is trying to have your cake and eat it well of course yeah of course of course it is yeah <laughs> it's like you know you you divorce your missus or your husband and she wants the house he wants he wants the car he wants the children you know you've got some something's got to give because at the end of the day you're dealing with millions of people's lives yeah. You know, it's all very well this infighting, yeah. you know, and with the with the Tories and the Labour and whatever, it's all about politi- party politics they want. But at the end of the day, it's the people that count. Yeah. Because in, 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 the, in the day, the people can vote you out. Mm. You know, that'd be quite interesting with the next general election, how all these, both sides, of the, they might just get white. Yeah, I Because I think, they've shown how in it they are. Yeah, really, I, do, I do think that maybe the next general ele- election could be really interesting in could that. Could be a wild card. Yeah, could in that, I wild. don't... I don't think the Green Party. Well, I don't think the Conservatives and the Labour are gonna. Ha- it's not gonna be a two party. Yeah, race I think them days are gone now. I think so. Yeah, I and think so. And I think so. especially with all the, the splits that have come yeah, yeah, as yeah. a result of yeah, what's yeah. happened in Brexit. But maybe that will make us more democratic. Yeah, and what I, I think is good as well, like you say, with the with the media and social media, people are more informed nowadays. I mean, when I was a youngster, yeah. but we didn't know all this information, you know. And when you watched the news, you was you was bored with it. Yeah. You know, we used to have Ted Eath and Harold Wilson, all these guys. They were like old funny duddies, you know. And, and but now everybody's everybody's on the board. Everybody got something to say. And everybody's got yeah. an opinion. Well, why not? Because yeah. it's your life, yeah. you know. And when you make that vote, that's you. Then that's, that's, your, that's part of your your life, you know. You're yeah. you know voting for that, but. Um, so anything else? 
Um, yeah, kind of like, so what were your reasons for voting to leave? Well, like I say, I just think um, we was bullied a bit too much with the EU. I think they... Um, you say I th bullied. I think, for, well, for me, that got it. I don't know if you watched a programme about two years ago about um, Britain leaving Europe. And David Cameron went to, to Brussels before the referendum. And he asked for a few concessions. There was, I can't remember exactly what. They were just simple ones. And they basically just bullied him, said, no, you can't have this. And I, he came back as a Remainer, and he was quite shocked how they basically just sort of dismissed him a bit. You know, and Britain's probably the second or third biggest player in the EU. You know, and like you said about cherry picking earlier on, I don't think he was cherry picking. You know, but he was just saying, look, can we have this system? Can we have this? We meet you halfway. They didn't want to do that. Yeah. They started bullying us a bit. And I think the British people just got boxed in. And when you're saying about immigration, I think it was more than that. I think it goes back to um, Tony Blair. But when he, he went to. What I'm saying is, it wasn't just about, for me personally, it wasn't just about immigration, it was, all, it was all about politicians in general. How they lied about the banking, you know, the miners, the Hillsborough thing, the, um, the labour with going to Iraq. All these things added up, they just represented the power or the establishment. Yeah, and people just, I know, but what I'm saying is a yeah. lot of people voted, that was one of the reasons as well. And Europe just telling us what to do. Merkel just dismissing us. When you they say all Europe added telling up. you what to do. Well, EU, us what EU. To do. No, but what do you mean by that specifically? I'm just interested to understand. Well, basically, they don't respect that we're we're we're, we're, we're an island nation. You know, we didn't really need them from the beginning. We joined in '73. You know, all these the EU was, was born originally because of two world wars in Europe. That the Europeans started all these wars. And after the war, they had this EU to sort of get them together again. Britain, we, we didn't stall that trouble. They wanted us in 73 to come in, trade and stuff like that. But this country stood on its own two feet long before all that. So is your opinion that Britain is um, blameless? In no, any not of blameless. No, not blameless. In regards what, to the wars and the things No, like but what I'm on about the reason the EU was formed, because of two world wars in Europe. I'm not on about empires, I'm on about the EU started because of two world wars in Europe. Nothing to do with that's a separate thing, you know. And we came in in '73. Before '73, we was an okay country, you know. We joined, and after 40 years, we realised these guys are getting too. Much. I mean, a lot of them guys who run the EU. So the fact that our GDP increased is relevant. What do you mean? So the the value of the GDP went up after joining Europe, not down. Well, that's all. Pro that's you know, it's it's, it's teething and problems, so, isn't so it? It's like may, so we may, we we are, we're actually better off as. Well, the thing is, I've, I've just got a job now, right, in a warehouse. I've just come back to Wellingborough to live from Liverpool, right? Okay. They're crying out for workers at this place. Okay. You know, there's plenty of work going on in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a myth about unemployment. There's people still want to come to this country. There's still plenty of work. And there's enough clever people in this country to make this country work in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so, your, so your reasons for voting were that Europe was inflicting too many one, 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 one of the reasons, also politicians in general, okay. I mean they've proved it by how, how in, you know, the, in it they are, yeah. um, the way they like, the little man, like I say, the one who voted to leave, it wasn't just about all these things, it was about just getting pushed aside, pushed aside, and it was only a little way of voting back, why can't he do that, yeah. why can't he do that, why, get, why blame him for that, because his guy's been pushed and pushed. You know, you know, in his own house, so to speak, he's getting pushed and pushed by people who are not, not serving his purpose. I mean, they've proved it, these politicians. They've done nothing good for the people since, since Brexit, have they? Um, and this myth about this country... This country so do you think done, that will change in leaving the EU? I think we will... If you're problems with the politicians of the UK, I think they've, what's that got I to think, do with voting to leave? Sorry, I'm sorry to be like that. Because they're not doing a job on behalf of the British people properly. But why does leaving the EU has why because is that they're, they're, our they're, because they they politicians. because the way they run it as well they had all the power they didn't it was self it was self governing they didn't they was um because Parliament explicitly promised to accept the referendum result yeah well that's another thing I mean so they didn't even so your question itself is yeah what's that going to do with the EU is valid but it's also not valid because yeah. it's a knock on effect so but what then, you but hold what's on, the hold hope on, then hold on, hold on. them basically doing everything to negate the referendum yeah. result which is 
clearly, clearly plain to see, mm. is emblematic of the fact that politics, in, politics generally is, is quite, quite corrupt. So what's one got to do with the other? You can argue they're differently, but at the same time, A causes B, causes C, causes D. Right, but us leaving the EU, so say we leave the EU yeah. with no deal, yeah. for argument's sake. Yeah. But that won't be the British people's fault, will it? That'd be politi the no, politicians no, that no, no, they no, no, their job blue. Yeah, so um so if we so say for argument's sake we leave with no deal. Yeah. How is that going to so what happens next to restore well, your to Labour are wiped out of the next general election, then you would hope, and it's not a guarantee, but you would hope that following proper politicians will understand the, the lessons learned. That's not hundred percent guaranteed. So That's in a way it's a way to teach politicians a lesson. Well yes. not yeah <laughs> I wouldn't put it like that, but, but yeah, I wouldn't put it like that exactly. But in a it's way, like, it's a good brutal, thing that you're, principle, you're yeah. brushing all these crops. You know, they're, they're, I mean, look at the expenses scandal for 10 yeah, years Yeah, well, that's ago. another thing. The bankers, risk. you know, all these things you're saying about... Wow, well, don't get me started on their 11% pay rise as well. No, no, no. <laughs> to be fair, a lot of people voted out, not for what we just put. These little little yeah. things as well, and they all add up. And then, and that man, when he says yes or no, he's I'm just sick of these politicians. I mean, yeah. they, haven't done, they haven't served the people. Sorry, what time is it? it time I was is. just checking, 20 past three. Okay, so I have long to go and get my daughter. daughter. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, very, I'll Lovely tell you what, it's good to see you. You're very... Oh, lovely to talk to you too. Very good, very good. Thank very you. Good. you <laughs> lovely to meet you. Yeah. Um, so, so I do actually generally have to go and get my daughter from nursery. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but out of curiosity. On the list of people, no, whatever. No, 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 no. Three years ago. Sorry, oh, three years ago. Uh, oh, I voted to uh, remain. Did you? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So what do you... Do you think yeah. that off cam because we've got video? But I mean, now that, now that I mean, the thing is, now that the vote's been done, um, I do believe you have to go with it. Yeah, I agree. As and well, I feel yeah. extremely sorry for yeah. Mrs. May. I don't yeah, know. Which is funny enough, you know, she is literally hated by literally everyone. I know it's all Poor these grey, it's all these grey suits, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm just. Do you think she was just? I mean, it sounds a dark question. Do I you mean, think she took it on from Cameron, who sort of like walked away. Yeah, he didn't did, he? didn't he? So. Yeah, but is it is it kind of like when you're trying to? all things to all people, that's the worst thing of all. Do you think she just happened to be in fate, just put her in this moment in time yeah. with this Brexit? Yeah. Do you think if Brexit didn't exist, do you think she could have been an okay Prime Minister? Or do you think Brexit is going to define her, isn't it? Because people are going to yeah. remember Brexit yeah. in 15 years' time and, they and they're going to remember who was in know, charge. Yeah, I know they want to get rid of her, don't they? Yeah. But do you oh, think oh. anybody else could have done a better job when, it, when At she... At the time? Yeah. Do you think Cameron, what do you think Cameron would have done if he was still in? How do you think he would have played it? Oh, I don't think he'd have done anything. You don't mean, no, I yeah. don't think he'd done any, anything better than yeah. Mrs May. I really don't think he would So have do you think it. you should? we should respect you, the... You're not taking me here. No, no. You? No, we, we're not allowed to do it. So you think we should, the British people, when it's all said and done, should respect the vote? Yeah, been a even, even, even though it's not your, your yeah, decision, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, I think they yeah. should. Yeah, I agree on that. That's a good point. I mean, I think a lot of people who voted to leave uh, did it for one reason, which yeah. is uh, immigration, yeah. really, I think. Do you think it could have been a mixture? For me personally, it was more of a protest vote that the politicians over the years have just lied and been corrupt and the British people didn't get a say in what they wanted what to what happened, you know? I mean the thing is about me, you know with Blair we're going through Iraq. Mm. That was the beginning of me not trusting mm. politicians mm. properly, you know? Well, um, I wasn't, I wasn't, and then the bankers in two thousand and twelve. You know, it was a slow progress and then EU is telling us what to do. Like you say with immigration yeah. and all this it yeah. just I do you think with immigration it was too much at one time. You know like immigration since the 50s has been a slow thing, so people can, can um, interact I don't, I don't okay. Really, I don't know whether I had any disagreement with immigration. Yeah. I think no, no, for yeah. people who voted to leave, sorry. Do you no. think it, it was too much at one time immigration, whereas before in the past it's always been a slow thing, so people could sort of interact and get used to it a bit more? It seems to me the last four years it was just like so many million, whereas since the Second World War it's been like. It's been, it's not, it, you know, that's the, that's the way I look at it from that point of view. Yeah, I didn't worry about that. Yeah. But um, Theresa May, how do you think it's all going to pan out in the end? Uh, what do you think? I mean, I looked at my telegraph this morning. Mm. <laughs> uh, Daily Telegraph? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's obviously she's going, she's, she's doomed, isn't she? There must be like standing her effigy. <laughs> but like you say, who could, who's going to... 
We could do better. Who could have done a better job? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think if it goes to the only other person I would think that I'm sort of with really is Boris Johnson. Yeah. Boris? Yeah. Do you think he's got to be a, um, um, a lever to, to take it over though? To be the prime minister, you know, if the Tories have another yeah. um, leadership vote, do you yeah. think it's got to be a lever to, to to take that job, or do you think a Remainer could still do it? Because they would their heart be in it. That's the thing. Oh. So I mean, she was a Remainer, wasn't she? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if 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 Cameron and um, herself were both levers, do you think they would have took to the job better to do a better job in the end? Because they were actually doing a job that they didn't really want to do. Mm. Do you think that sort of hindered them? It's like somebody at work doesn't really want to do that job to get the end result, but they know they've yeah, got to well do it. Well, if they don't want to do it, they don't do That's, it well, they do they? Yeah, and they shouldn't be doing the job, <laughs> should they? No. That's a good point, yeah. They shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>